Hi, I am Dave Berry and I lead the technical and engineering organization for ATI Specialty Rolled Products. I am a trained material scientist uh, by degree and by training here at ATI and today I'm here to talk to you about armor and ballistic testing. ATI today participates in the armor market via primarily titanium for ground vehicles and for personal body armor protection. Uh, it's important uh, as the vehicles are looking to increase their survivability, weight becomes a challenge. We as ATI participate primarily in titanium, which is the lightest weight, highest strength material on the market to better enable troop survivability on vehicles like Abrams and other frontline combat vehicles. So today we'll talk about a little bit of the science of how do we study the ballistic resistance of materials to make better armors, how do we know that an armor will be good at stopping a bullet or different types of projectiles that come in because there are multiple kinds, and then how we, we measure and help the market get to the most efficient designs and the lowest cost and the lightest weight options that are available for them to uh, design their vehicles with. When we talk about armor, part of what we study is how do we know how good an armor is? And one of the ways to do that is through ballistic testing. Ballistic testing is pretty straightforward in principle. You take a piece of armor, you shoot at it, and you see how the armor reacts to that projectile. At the end of the day, it can be much more complicated, and as material scientists, it's important for us to understand how the projectile and the armor interact, how that defines its resistance to penetration, and then how we can design better materials to go and be better performers depending on the application that we're, we're trying to support. So one easy way to look at this is a measure of survivability. Thinking about this from a science standpoint and how to visualize how this works, when we look at what uh, you call a sigmoidal curve, so you have your velocity increases, what's our probability of penetration, right? So with an S curve, you have performance, and as the velocity goes up, you see your probability of penetration increasing and turning over to completeness. 100% here, 0% here. So your V0 is really this section down here. Your V50 is at that 50% completion point, and then this is 100% V100 probability of penetration. So real simple, if you're doing design for body armor, essentially your challenge here is to find what your thickness is, you have to keep testing different thicknesses of armor to find at which point you can make the lightest possible armor to give you the V0 protection you need against the projectile that you're trying to defend against. The benefit of doing a V50, you might ask yourself, why would we want to have the armor be shot through? The benefit of the V50 is we can do a statistical distribution now to say, okay, I can find without testing a whole bunch of different thicknesses, I can find the statistics that tell me if this is my V50, and I can understand this curve, then I can design the minimum thickness I need, so the lightest weight that I can employ for armor, which is always very important, at which I can stop whatever threat I'm trying to stop. So this is the basis by which uh, we do ballistic testing. Uh, the V50 in particular is highly used for armor, for ground vehicles and things like that, where you have lots of threats, you have lots of weight, and you're trying to make sure that you can maintain the minimum weight and still get the protection needed for survivability of the occupants of those ground vehicles. Importantly for us material scientists here at ATI, uh, understanding how our titanium performs during the test and how particularly it fails can help us develop new products, new armor materials, help us develop new ways of preventing ballistic penetration with our armor. So I have in front of me here uh, some examples of how we measure and see what happens with increasing velocity. So in this case, this is a titanium armor panel that's been fired with what's called a fragment simulating projectile. It's really meant to mimic a 155 millimeter artillery shell going off and having the shrapnel from that hit a vehicle. And so as that hits at different speeds, what you see is the first impact at a low speed creates what are called adiabatic shear bands. So the speed at which projectile hits is so fast that as the material deforms, it heats up and there's nowhere for that heat to dissipate. And ultimately it begins to melt the titanium, a very high melting point product, an alloy, where it starts to melt that product in very thin lines and then that forms cracks. In the second round, we're able to stop the projectile again, but you can see there's more damage and more bulge. In the third projectile, we have a speed at which we're starting to see these adiabatic shear bands connect to the back face of 
the armor. And while this is still what we would call a, a incomplete or partial penetration, so below the V50 velocity, uh, it's getting very close. As we go further and increase our speed, we now have what's called a complete penetration, where we're above the V50. And because you can see, the projectile did not go through, but the back is broken off, and that has become a projectile on the other side of the armor. And in the last case here, as the projectile hits, this projectile again has not gone through in this case, but not only has the back come off, but the center section has plugged out. And so we have backspall leading to more backspall and ultimately sheer plugging, and that is a complete penetration. So understanding how this progresses and understanding how the material designs can help mitigate this and get better performance is key to the material science we're doing here at ATI.